to film this vlog two other times now, but I don't want to wait any longer because today is kind of a very important day. Hi, I'm JD and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since January, my last upload, and I'll get to why in a minute, but I wanted to thank all the subscribers for hanging, hanging in there with me and all the new people who have joined since then. It means the world to me that you guys subscribe. So some of you may know if you follow my Instagram about this already, and I'm sorry if you do, but many of you know that I have been struggling with health issues for the past year or so. and. It actually goes further than that. Uh, I have realized uh, a lot of things that I thought were normal and just me overworking and stuff like that uh, were symptoms of something bigger. It wasn't until I saw a specialist at the end of January that I found out differently. At the end of January, I was finally able to get in to see a specialist about the issues I was having with my shoulder. I was having really bad inflammation in my shoulder and some other joints. My primary doctor had suspected rheumatoid arthritis, um, but a lot of those tests came back negative. So he sent me to a rheumatologist to kind of figure out what was going on. And after some blood tests, and after x-rays and MRI, I was diagnosed with a autoimmune disorder that was kind of surprising to me. Now with all autoimmune disorders, it can be hard to nail down exactly just one. A lot of times if you have one autoimmune disorder, you have multiples or you can, you are highly likely to develop more along the road wrote, my symptoms spanned two different autoimmune disorders that fall into the same category of autoimmune. At the beginning of February, I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. <sighs> that last one was a, it's a mouthful. And at the appointment I was diagnosed with, I was started on a medicine right down there to try and help control my inflammation response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so psoriatic arthritis, you don't have to have psoriasis. I don't have any rashes at the moment. It's just the widespread pain from that one that I really, the, uh, is a symptom I really have. Um, Angliosing spondylitis uh, is a bit harder to deal with. Basically with ankylosing spondylitis, the <laughs> it's, it's really hard to describe how that one works. And it's basically when you boil it down to the very like the meaning of the words. It's basically the arthritis of the spine. But it is degenerative. It affects most of my major joints. Um, I actually think the issues with my shoulder came from that disease. And I just didn't know it. The bone spurs, um, the arthritis in my shoulder, that the doctor ended up cleaning out quite a bit of it was all from AS. The biggest thing I have, uh, symptom I have found challenging besides the chronic pain um, is the chronic fatigue and just not having the energy to get up and do my daily routines, not even like my normal routines, just the stuff I need to get up to do to survive. <laughs> Um, getting up and taking a shower can be a half day event. <laughs> um, getting, just, you know, getting the kids out the door to school or to an activity 
is can be really challenging some days, let alone trying to keep up with writing and YouTube and social media. I've started to find ways to kind of help me with things like with social media. I end up scheduling a lot of my posts uh, at the beginning of the week so that way I can spend more time interacting and uh, commenting when you guys comment to me. Um, but a lot of that means I, like, I just, I have not found the energy or time to post vlogs. So I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> um, but it, it's been challenging. And I know, as I know, most of this year and past year have been for a lot of people. Um, so back in February, when I got my diagnosis, I was started on Humira, which is a TNF blocker. It blocks part of my immune system. And so it compromised my immune system pretty much. Um, I just have to be super careful uh, about going out now. And I like, I, even though I've gotten my vaccinations, I still have to be very careful and I still have to wear my masks and stuff like that. Um, however, let's see, that was back in February that I started Humira. Humira can take anywhere from three to six months, I think, three to five months to see any progress with. And usually you see something. But with when I was on Humira, I didn't see any progress. <laughs> I didn't see any um, lessening of my symptoms. In fact, some of my symptoms got worse. And so it was just very disheartening to be on that and see it. Last week, my rheumatologist agreed that it wasn't working and so I was started on something else. Um, and I feel like it worked for a day or two. I felt so much better. Uh, and then last night I was starting to feel bad again. I was like, no. But my insurance, lovely insurance, um, not only did it throw a fit when I was on Humira and my, when I started Humira, my rheumatologist had to fight for it because normally the first course of action is NSAIDs and I'm allergic to those. So they were like, well, why wasn't she started on NSAIDs first? And like, she'll go into anaphylactic shock. Um, and so last week when my doctor put me on Enbrel, uh, the insurance again, <laughs> through a bit and like, no, she can't be on this. She needs to be on one of these other ones. And the doctor was just like, ah. So on Wednesday, in a couple days, I get to go back to the doctor's office and try something else. But um, Embril is another TNF blocker. And if, and so is these other ones that I'm getting ready to try, if they don't work, then I may not, TNF blockers may not work for me and I'd have to go to another class of drug to try and get things under control. So today is World AS Day. It is a day of awareness for ankylosing spondylitis. And I want to share this journey with you because it is important I had never heard of this disease um, and it's a fairly common disease that goes undiagnosed in a lot of people because they just kind of pass their symptoms off as getting older. I thought, I honestly thought it was my bed. Um, I thought I just didn't like my sleep number bed. I kept waking up with bad um, back aches and I thought I thought I had a food and um, I thought that there was an issue with something I was eating that was causing the inflammation but now I know that there is that it's that's not it 
not it at all. So a flare of symptoms for ankylosing spondylitis for me is my lower back just being so stiff and hurting, especially after rest. So after sleeping all night um, or after being in bed all night, I should say. Um, AS can also cause insomnia, mouth ulcers. You can have eye infections. It can affect your heart. It can affect your kidneys, the chills, you, or you could run in low grade fever, the swollen joints you, where your AS is basically your immune system picking a joint and saying, yep, this isn't right. And it gets all hot and swollen and inflamed and sore and stiff. Nausea and the fatigue that can come with these layers just can be debilitating. Um, basically, I just get so exhausted that I feel nauseous and have to lay down. Thinking about some of the symptoms that I've had and I've dealt with, like having the list of symptoms, I, I can see where this could have started back in middle school, back in high school for me. <laughs> I'm 36. I hope that by posting my story um, about my symptoms and whatnot can hope hopefully decrease the time of diagnosis for somebody else. I know some people can go 10, 12 years before they have a proper diagnosis. And it can be hard because there's a lot of misconceptions about this disease out there. A lot of people think, oh, it only affects men. Mm -mm. It only affects adult men. <laughs> no, it can affect kids. Um, it affects women just as much, if not more, but we're more likely to go undiagnosed because um, our symptoms are slightly different. We're mo more likely to have less um, radiographic damage, um, basically enough damage in our joints and spine to for it to show up on um, x-ray and MRI. And so a lot of people can write us off. Um, some people also think that if you are, if you don't carry the gene uh, for it, there is one gene associated with AS at the moment. And they think, you know, if you are negative of this gene, if you don't have this gene, you, don't, you can't have AS, which is not, <laughs> not true as I am one of those uh, HLA negative diagnosis. Um, for me, the, for me, the diagnosis came once she saw the MRI of my hips and the damage that is already there. Um, so basically my disease has progressed enough that it is showing damage in my joints, which I kind of already <laughs> figured from my knee injury in 2018 i injured my knee and it took forever to heal and it wasn't like i had done anything like tear my meniscus or anything i i, I from what the orthopedist said i bruised a fat pad but it took three months four months of rest and pt for, it, for the swelling to go away. And now I know that that was just a really bad flare of AS. Yeah, the same thing with my shoulder. Although there was actual bone spurs in my shoulder that were growing into my rotator cuff, um, that I had a lot of other issues with my shoulder, uh, arthritis, issues with my the collarbone bone joint, um, but when he, when the surgeon went in there to help uh, remove the bone spurs and stuff, he cleaned out a lot of arthritis that was there too. So, <laughs> lucky me, right? <laughs> so today for World AS Day, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you for your support, and it means a lot to me that you guys are here. I will try to be less self-conscious. <laughs> and post some more updates 
more frequent. Um, I don't, this is primarily a channel for my writing um, and my planners and just to kind of share my writing journey with you guys. But it's like on one hand, I don't want to dominate the channel with my chronic illness diseases, <laughs> chronic, chronic illnesses and my journey there. But I know that going forward, they are going to be something that affects everything in my life. I can already see how much it's affected my writing, my planning, um, how I parent, how I just get through my days. So I'm not sure how it's going to affect my YouTubing, but I just want to say thank you for your support.